am I an AI program you wrote to interview people until I get good enough to interview you? Well, I'd be impressed if, if you were. I'd be impressed by myself if you were. I don't think we're quite up to that yet, but uh, maybe you're from the future, Lex. If you did, would you tell me? Is that, a, is that a good thing to tell a language model that's tasked with interviewing that it is, in fact, um, AI? Maybe we're in a kind of meta-Turing test. Uh, probably, probably it would be a good idea not to tell you so it doesn't change your behavior, right? This is a kind of... Link. Heisenberg uncertainty principle situation. If I yeah. told you, you'd behave differently. Yeah. Maybe that's what's happening with us, of course. This is a benchmark from the future where they replay 2022 as a year before AIs were good enough yet and now we want to see is it going to pass <laughs> exactly if i was such a program would you be able to tell do you think so to the touring test question you've you've talked about the benchmark for solving intelligence what would be the impressive thing you've talked about winning a nobel prize and ai system winning a nobel prize but i still return to the touring test as a compelling test the spirit of the touring test is mm -hmm. a compelling test yeah, the Turing test, of course, it's been unbelievably influential, and Turing's one of my all-time heroes. But I think if you look back at the 1950 paper, his original paper, and read the original, you'll see I don't think he meant it to be a rigorous formal test. I think it was more like a thought experiment, almost a bit of philosophy he was writing, if you look at the style of the paper. And you can see he didn't specify it very rigorously. So, for example, he didn't specify the knowledge that the expert or judge would have. Um, not, you know, how much time would they have to investigate this? So these are important parameters if you were going to make it uh, a true sort of formal test. Um, and, you know, some by some measures, people claim the Turing test passed several, you know, a decade ago. I remember someone claiming that with a, with a kind of very bog standard normal uh, uh, logic model um, because they pretended it was a, it was a kid. So the, the judges thought that the machine, you know, was, was, a, was a child. So um, that would be very different from an expert AI person uh, interrogating a machine and knowing how it was built and so on. So I think, um, you know, we should probably move away from that as a, as a formal test and move more towards uh, a general test where we test the AI capabilities on a range of tasks and see if it reaches human level or above performance on maybe thousands, perhaps even millions of tasks eventually and cover the entire sort of cognitive space. So I think... Um, for its time, it was an amazing thought experiment. And also 1950s, obviously, there's barely the dawn of the computer age. So, of course, he only thought about text. And now um, we have a lot more different inputs. So, yeah, maybe the better thing to test is the generalizability. So across multiple tasks. But it, I think it's also possible, as as systems like God will show, that eventually that might map right back to language. So you might be able to demonstrate your ability to generalize across tasks by then communicating your ability to generalize across tasks, which is kind of what we do through conversation anyway, when we jump around. Ultimately, what's in there in that conversation is not just you moving around knowledge, it's you moving around like these entirely different modalities of understanding that ultimately map to your ability to to uh, operate successfully in all of these domains, which you can think of as tasks. Yeah, I think certainly we as humans use language as our main generalization communication tool. So I think we end up thinking in language and expressing our solutions in language. Um, so it's going to be a very powerful uh, uh, mode in which to uh, explain, you know, the system to explain what it's doing. Um, but I don't think it's the only uh, uh, modality that matters. So I think there's going to be a lot of, you know, there's, there's a lot of different ways to express uh, capabilities uh, other than just language. Yeah, visual, yeah. robotics, body language. Um, yeah, actions, the interactive aspect of all that. That's all part of it. But what's interesting with Gato is that it's, uh, it's, it's, it's sort of pushing prediction to the maximum in terms of like, you know, uh, mapping arbitrary sequences to other sequences and sort of just predicting what's going to happen next. So prediction seems to be uh, fundamental to intelligence. And what you're predicting doesn't so much matter. Yeah, it seems like you can generalize that quite well. So obviously language models predict the next word. Um, Gatto predicts potentially any uh, action or any token. 
Uh, and it's just the beginning, really. It's our most general agent, one could call it, so far. But, um, you know, that itself can be scaled up massively more than we've done so far. And obviously, we're in the, in the middle of doing that. But the big part of solving AGI is creating benchmarks that help us get closer and closer, sort of uh, creating benchmarks that test the generalizability. And it's just still interesting that this fella, Alan Turing, was one of the first and probably still one of the only people that was trying, maybe philosophically, but was trying to formulate a benchmark that could be followed. It is, even though it's it's fuzzy, it's still sufficiently rigorous to where you can run that test. And I still think something like the Turing test will, in, at the end of the day, be the thing that truly impresses other humans so that you can have a close friend who's an AI system. For that friend to be a good friend, they're going to have to be able to uh, play StarCraft and they're going to have to do all of these tasks, um, get you a beer, so the robotics tasks, uh, play games with you, use language, humor, all of those kinds of things. But that ultimately can boil down to language. It feels like in, not in terms of the AI community, but in terms of the actual impact of general intelligence on the world, it feels like language will be the place where it truly shines. I think so, because it's such an important kind of input output for us. I think you're right. I think the Turing test, that what the the kind of the the philosophy behind it, which is the idea of can can a machine mimic the behaviors of uh, a, a human, in, in and I would say wider than just language and text. Um, then, you know, in terms of actions and everything else, creativity, all these things, then um, if it can sort of match or exceed human cognitive capabilities, then I think we have a, you know, a true intelligence. So I thought from that perspective, you're right. I think he did formulate the right uh, kind of uh, setup. I just, I think there'll be a kind of humor in the AI systems of the future, looking back to this conversation <laughs> <laughs> and thinking about the Turing test and, uh, also thinking about by that time they would know which year they were finally able to sort of cross the threshold of human level intelligence and, and think how funny it is that we humans were still confused about this whole problem. <laughs> That's been long ago been solved. Well, hello to the AI agents of the future. <laughs>